Right, time to put the shower tray in. So this is a composite panel. It's already got all the drops already moulded into it. So you set it into the floorboard. So we're going to cut a hole out here first. So trusty circular saw, and you set the depth of the blade just to the thickness of the floor. So I just cut through it, and then um, then we can slot this in place. So I need to do some measuring to make sure I've got the back distance from the back wall right. Make sure that it's parallel to this front wall as well, so a load of checking to be done. And then I'll be cutting this out, just making sure I'm not going to be cutting through any screw holes. Right, I ordered this kit ages ago. All of this, all of this came in one kit. Just tell them what shower tray you want. Oh, let's pick them up. And it says open the tub. So it's true internet style. <laughs> right, so what we got here? Oh look. Neutral weatherproof silicon sealant, gloves. Scrim tape, some other bits of scrim. Instructions. Primer, acrylic primer. Waterproof walls and floors. Easy application can be used on all substrates. Right, that's me done. I have done something that most blokes don't do. I have read the instructions. Because this is electrical, it has to be connected up and tested by a, a proper electrician. So I'm just gonna lay it in for now, do a resistance check as per the manual, and we'll see how we get on. Right, thought I'd take a minute. First of all, it's a mess again. You spend your life creating mess. That's because insulation stuff has come out of the bathroom, it's gone over there, that big white thing is the shelf for the, for the sink. It's just out of the way. I haven't done any plumbing or anything yet. So what comes next? Now I've primed that floor. Tanking compound. This is like a thick rubberized paint. So prime it, two hours later once it's tacky, this will be going on with a roller. This creates like a rubber film almost. And then that's it. The whole shower area is waterproofed and then ready for tiling, basically. Tank straight on top of this. So, it's a waiting game. So while that waiting game is happening, I've been tidying up. I know it don't look like it, but I have. So getting rid of boxes, wood, offcuts of this wardrobe, getting lots of little bits and pieces jobs done. So I'm gonna put the finishing strip on the edge of that um, dividers, stuff like that. There's always lots of little jobs to do in between the big ones. So if I can get this on today, that means it can set overnight. I've then got to lay out the electric floor mat. Again, all this comes as a kit. 
So there's the electric floor mat. Now I deliberately sized this so it's 13 amps. So I don't need to feed it directly into the consumer unit by itself. And that means I can put it on a fuse. Now this should have a double breaker on it, so I'm going to have to put a double, switch, double, double switched fuse in there. Um, but like I say, I'll get an electrician to check it all out anyway. So this will go in imminently. In fact, the kind gentleman have told me exactly what it is on the tin. So this will go down in the morning and then I'm tiling. By the end of tomorrow, there'll be tiles on this floor. Not grouted, but there'll be tiles. It's going to break my heart and break me back and give me glutes of steel. That's how we get on. Okay, Andy, what on earth are you doing? Well, I put all this effort into getting this floor primed and ready. I am not going to get it dirty. So, got the packy bags on the feet. I don't want really to do with bare feet because you've got grease in your skin, haven't you? Oh, has that got handles? So, there we go. You can feel it's slightly tacky, which is what we want. Oh, tanking compound. Absolutely tanked. Eey, another day, another dollar if only. Right, you're looking in that room going, what's he done in there? Underfloor heating. So the tanking has gone off overnight. This mat comes pre-sized, so you buy the mat for the size of room and it comes with everything you need. It came as part of the kit with the tanking and everything as well. So let's have a look. So you have to make it fit. Wires can't cross and they've got to be between two and four inches of the sidewall. And I've tried to put it out so I'd leave no cold spots. The gap you see along the front there is where a glass screen's gonna go and I want to know that I can fasten the screen in. I just need to check that left hand. Oh, I need to check that left hand end because I've done something to daft there. Any little loose bits and pieces, any cables I've had to remove off the screen. They provide a bit of tape that you can just tack them down with, which is what I'm about to do now. And um, off you go. Okay, Andy, what are you up to now? Well, first thing I have to point out is the rest of the loft is dusty. So I have my footwear just outside the door, and I keep walking around here in my socks so I don't transfer the dust onto here, which is going to get in the way of bonding. You can see I've laid the mat out. There's only two rules, the edge needs to be between two and four inches of the edge and you don't overlap any cables. You just roll it out, you start at the thermostat which is just here and then you... I didn't put any under the toilet but you can put it in the shower tray. I don't need it at the very back of the shower tray because you're unlikely to be stood there. So I've got it as close as I can, there's one slight cold spot over here. Now tiling, what's the secret to tiling? measuring up, getting it right before you start. So that lip there, I want to tile up to that because I know I put the shower tray in square to that back wall. So if I make sure I get a line along there and then you're looking to center it, you can center it in two ways. The waist back here is the center of the room. So I can have a middle of the tile matching the waist or I can have a join. I don't want it lopsided either way and so I've put it down the middle and I've made sure at both sides I've got an even gap at each wall because when you walk in this door you're going to see these natural reference points and if that's bob-eyed it's going to look wrong and likewise if there's a big tile at one side and a little tile at the other your eye's going to spot it and it's going to look wrong. So you get it set out and you get it right first. So what I've done is I've put a whole row of tiles in. They're not glued down or anything, they're just laid there. And I've put two rows at the back, one over there, one over here, just to check that it's not like this. 
And now I know that that's a straight line. So what I'm going to do in a second is I'm going to get the laser level and project a line down there. So that when I start putting adhesive down and putting these tiles down, I'm good. Now, the other thing then is that you wash problems into corners. So you start in the middle and then you come this way and that way. So I will then do another row and another row. So I'm washing into the corners. And once I've got that as my datum basically, and then I'll start doing the same going that way. However, this is a shower tray with drops. So what I'm not going to do is I'm not going to do that corner and work along because then these joins won't line up. What I've got to do with the shower tray is I've got to go straight that way and then work outwards, fill into the corners or wash the problems into the corners. Um, partly because we're going to be boxing these two corners, there's going to be a sink under here so it kind of hides details. Um, but if you don't, you'll wash a problem into the middle and then you'll see it. So that's the trick. Get yourself all lined up before you start, before you mix any adhesive or grout anything. Just get yourself ready to go. So I'm now ready to go. Bucket I'm going to mix in. Cleaning water, spare water, mixing water and vice versa. Back there is a bag of mix. Put a board at the back because it's going to make a mess. And buy yourself one of these. Goes in a drill. Any old drill, I've got my battery drill. Makes life so much easier and so much quicker. Trust me, you're going to want one of these. Now, I'm not going to do a whole bag at once because this stuff only goes off in 30 minutes or so. So, I ain't got a lot of time to get on with it. I have no idea how much I need for this. Right, tile cutting. Got a few options. The traditional one is to use something like this, where you score the tile and then snap it. That's all well and good, but for hard ceramic tiles like I'm using, it can be kind of difficult. And also when you get a thin piece you need to take off, these don't work very well. So that's the traditional one. Not, I'm, I'm not the biggest fan. They do, when they work, give a reasonably clean edge, but can be quite sharp. So I've got to watch that one. Number two, which I don't recommend. You get a proper tile cutting disc on your angle grinder. This produces a rubbish edge. It's all right for cutting flagstones and stuff, but for detail like there, don't try it. Number three, that's what I'm gonna use. You can see how beat up this is. This is a tile cutter. Water goes inside to keep it cool, and it uses a little cutting disc, which is under there. This shield just keeps the water off. I've put protection up at the back. Let's show you. Let's do it from here. Here, because water does splatter. All right, and I don't want it everywhere. So there we have all the tiles quickly cut for the shower area, or not all the shower area. But that only took about 10 minutes just doing them one after another and using the guide for the edges. It's not a perfect edge. I don't think this disc is a is great for these kind of tiles but that'll get covered over when we grout so I'm quite happy
stuffed up on my glasses. Took me four days, not full days, so about 10 till four. So I guess 24 hours. Um, it's in. Just need grouting. I say just, because grouting will probably be done in two mixes, one session, which I'll do tomorrow. It's a bit late in the day. A bit late in the day for doing it now. This needs to set for three hours, and by the time that's happened, I'll be on my second or maybe third cup of chow. So here you can see all the drops for the shower. So they all kind of going like that. So all I did to get these lines is I put the towels on with the spaces in between and just drew the lines from the corners to the corners of the tray. So I knew that there'd be a, a line there, a line there, and two at the back. Um, and drew it on the tiles and just went and cut it. Put this little piece here in, because there's a glass screen going here, and I wanted a flat bit, and I know there's no underfloor heating underneath here. So I know that if I, if I uh, screw fittings into here, I'm all good. I'm all good. So... Grouting. Sponge. Lots of buckets of clear water. Get your grout, mix it up. Not too much because it goes off quite quickly. And using the flow, whack it into the cracks and then buff it off with the clean water and the... Um, sponge and that leaves a nice surface. Don't push too much because you don't want to create a, a dip like river channels. You want it to be level so it's a gentle buff and get it cleaned up and then after a few hours you just start cleaning because you'll have lots of residue and dust. So it's going to take me a couple of hours I think beginning of day four but there's only one way to crack on and that's to crack on. So let's crack on. What is it? It is a latrine! It's not plumbed in. That's where it's going to go. Maybe I've made a mistake, maybe it should be further over, so I'm going to have to work out exactly where the underfloor heating is. Because that'd be scary. And what is this? It is the sink! Again, not to get too excited out, but I'm going to mop, watch, and learn. Bathroom with we have a toilet. Let's do the 360. There's a toilet just positioned in, shower tray, and sink. Oh, yeah, gotta be happy with that.
Thank you.